Hi, my name is David Dodick. I'm a neurologist at Mayo Clinic here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I chair the Comprehensive Concussion Program here. One of the challenges in, when you're evaluating and managing uh, individuals with concussion is being able to reliably make a diagnosis, to know when the brain is injured, and then to actually follow that patient and know when the brain is actually recovered. Right now, we're left with relying on the individual reporting their symptoms and then reporting when their symptoms have, have resolved. What we do know, especially from functional imaging studies, is that there's a lag between the time when the athlete reports that their symptoms have resolved and the time when the brain is actually recovered. So what we really need is a biomarker or a diagnostic test that we can use to reliably indicate when a brain injury or concussion has occurred and a biomarker or a diagnostic test to know when the brain has actually recovered and not simply relying on an athlete's uh, reporting of symptoms. So I'm particularly excited about the work that we've done here uh, with Dr. Goodman and Dr. Vargas um, in finding an a possible electrophysiological biomarker that will indicate that a concussion has occurred. And we're hopeful with, repeat with more research and more studies that this may actually be a biomarker for recovery. Hi, I'm Bird Vargas, and I'm one of the neurologists at Mayo Clinic and one of the members of the Comprehensive Concussion Program. We're very excited about these data because we think that it has the possibility to change the way that we approach concussion patients in our clinic. Three points, I think, really need to be emphasized here, and that's number one, that uniformly, concussion patients are coming in with complaints of dizziness and findings on autonomic studies. Number two, is the fact that the dizziness that's often reported and which frequently suggests the need for vestibular testing may not actually be vestibular in origin, but may be reflective of, of an autonomic disorder. And lastly, the fact that some of the post-concussive symptoms that we're finding may actually be due to a hyperadrenergic state. My name is Brent Goodman. I'm a neurologist here at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. Autonomic nervous system dysfunction has long been recognized as a potential complication in patients suffering from severe traumatic brain injury, but has scarcely been recognized in patients with concussion or milder forms of brain injury. We looked at autonomic test findings in a series of 21 patients who suffered from con concussion and were evaluated here at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. And Autonomic testing was abnormal in all of these patients, most typically demonstrating an excessive heart rate increment, often a tachycardia with head up tilt. And in, in all patients, considerable uh, blood pressure uh, variability was noted. We interpret these findings as reflecting an impairment in the adrenergic nervous system, which is most likely central and resulting from these patients' concussion. Furthermore, we hypothesize that patients reporting dizziness following concussion, the symptoms of dizziness may actually represent symptoms of autonomic nervous system impairment. So these symptoms may include lightheadedness, syncope, presyncope, or even exercise intolerance. It has long been assumed that these symptoms of dizziness resulted from vestibular impairment. We suspect that this reflects autonomic nervous system dysfunction in many of these patients. Furthermore, we suggest that autonomic nervous system impairment is common in patients following concussion and that autonomic nervous system testing may be a valuable biomarker in evaluating patients uh, suffering from concussion.